Welcome back everyone to episode number two of my Feed the Beast Unstable World. As is always, this is your host, Bunny Vulture. And today I've decided to go ahead and do a little bit of uh, in-depth working with the mod, the Titania. Uh, I got a couple other things on me that I'm going to be getting into as well. Um, but I wanted to show you this mod because it's pretty cool and there's some items you can get from the get-go that are pretty awesome, I think. Uh, the very first thing you're going to need is what's called the Lexica Botania. And to, in order to get this, you basically just need to get a book uh, that you have. Um, I thought I would have a book around here somewhere. Um, maybe not. Do I have paper? Yes, no. Oh, God, I know. Let's just do this. There we go. Now I got it. So you basically just take book A into slot A and sapling of any variety, but put them together and you have your Lexica Batania. Uh, and inside it's going to tell you everything you need to know about getting started with Batania. Uh, some of the basic stuff you're going to need right off the bat um, that you're going to see around are there all these little mystical flowers that you'll see around the world. And there's quite a bit of them. There's actually 16, one for each uh, Minecraft color. Let's go ahead and make it day. Do, 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 do. And there we go. So let's go ahead and go outside. I have a chest here that has all the flowers in it. And there they are. So there's the mystic there are all these little mystical flowers that are out in the world. So when you're walking around and you happen to see that on the ground, and you see and you have these have they have these little nice little particle effects come up from. If you want to get started with this mod, you're gonna to want to go ahead and collect all those that you see when you're out in traffic because you are going to need them. Um, the next thing you're gonna to want to craft, um, so well, basically you collect you know all 16 varieties, get as many as you can. Um, I would recommend probably to initially get started, probably get something like if you can, uh, at least 10 of each, or at least 10 of the uh, yellow, orange. And, uh, shoot, what was it? It was yellow, orange, and light blue. Because uh, you'll need those for the day bloom. And I'll get to that here in a second. Um, basically, to get started, what you do is you craft various... Um, this vol this mod revolves around, uh, revolves around uh, mana as opposed to what V is for Thalmcraft. So you generate, you create stuff using mana. Um, in each, you gotta make these little flowers that generate mana, uh, and there's all different types. Uh, there's these day blooms that I just showed you the recipe for, <clears throat> and in order to make those, uh, you need the certain color flowers, and you can take the flowers and Put them in your inventory, and just like the normal flowers where, like, say, roses or dandelions, you'd put them in your inventory and you would get dye. Well, when you get the mystical flowers, you get their petals. And then with the petals, you craft this uh, this petal apothecary. And to make that, you need just a little bit of stone. And it is... There we are. So, and pretty much the, the manual goes over everything that you're going to need and how to do it. Um... And you can fill it with a bucket of water, and you throw seeds, and you can, you can re re read through this on your own pretty much. But you get uh, some stone and a petal, and boom, there you go. Uh, for easy, easy refilling and crafting, uh, I highly recommend putting this next to uh, some sort of infinite water source, so you can easily just take a bucket, pick it up, and refill it, because you're going to be making quite a bit of flowers. At least I have gone kind of crazy here. Uh, at the start to fill up your mana thing. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to build, um, well, after after you get the, your petal apothecary going, um, one of the things that I should mention is um, the mana generation process is slow. Um, very, very slow. And it takes a while to fill up your inventory. Well, not really inventory, but supply of mana. Um, and the way you get mana is you use the generating flora section. And you can see here there's all different types of flowers. The first one being the day bloom. And this generates uh, mana simply by planting it on the ground in sunlight. Um, and it's pretty easy to make. You just need two yellow, 
one orange and one light blue. You combine that in a petal apothecary with seed, with one little, you know, the regular vanilla seeds from wheat, uh, and then you get your day bloom. Uh, you, you plant these in a crisscross pattern for better efficiency. You don't want to have it uh, right adjacent next to each other because then they'll interfere with generating mana uh, next to each other. But if you leave a space between them, uh, a straight line connected like that, they can be um, catty corner from each other. That's fine, but not just right next to each other. So I've laid out quite a few here in this pattern to soak up the sun and provide mana to what are called mana spreaders. Uh, and what these do is um, they take the mana from all the flowers that are generating mana and they beam it, as you can see here, and I'll put on my wand of the forest here, and, you, and they beam it down to your mana pool. And your mana pool is what um, keeps all the mana, it stores it for you. Uh, and that uh, gives you, you can get items back from that as well. Um, so what you wanna do to um, transfer that is you do the mana manipulation section and you get a mana spreader. And you can, you can see here it allows you to travel from point A to point B. Uh, there is a, a distance limitation on these things. It's probably something like uh, 10 blocks, I think, something like that. Uh, I have this one hovering over here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So yeah, I had that back one block additional there in the corner and it stopped right here. Well, it didn't stop. Um, on the visual you'll see you know the kind of the the beam going down there and you see those little green circle things right there well it stopped right here and had a, a solid green circle and what that means is that's the furthest point the mana will go before it starts degrading so right now the the beams here are getting all the way to my mana pool without any degradation uh if you have it beyond that point uh i think there's like an infinite range but the further out you go, the, the more degradation you're gonna have. So you only wanna have it so far out. Uh, that one again is probably pretty close to being at maximum, the one I have way over there. Uh, so you wanna have your, your mana pools or your generation stuff pretty close to your mana pool. And I, there are upgrades you can do for that, uh, but we'll get to that in a later episode when I actually get to that point. Uh, there's actually an upgrade that you can get for those to make them go a little bit farther. Um, so, and then you're gonna want the mana pool. Um, what this does is simply put, it's a storage of mana. So it's kind of like a chest, uh, or say um, like the jars of V that you would have in Thomcraft a little bit, or the Essentia, I should say. Um, so instead of you know having all different types of uh, magic essence, you only have one here, yep, and it's all mana. And there's just different ways to generate and use it. Um, and it's pretty easy to make, and it take, takes these living rocks. Uh, the second flower you're going to make, want to make, and it, yeah, it could be the first two, uh, in addition to the day bloom, is this guy right over here, and it's probably easy to make two. That way you can, or you can make more than that if you want. Is the pure daisy, and you make that as you would probably suspect. Um, not there. No, where is it? Basics. Yeah, pure daisy. So basically, what it does is it transforms any wood and stone into the blocks, living wood and living rock, um, respectively. And so you put it in a little circle pattern. You don't have to put it with the wood and stone together. You can have it all wood or all stone or whatever pattern you want. Uh, give it a couple minutes and you get your living wood and whatnot. So then you take two of the living wood and you get your living wood, living wood twig and then well, let's go back. So you take your uh, white petals from the white flowers that you get, and you take four of those inside of, in, inside the uh, petal apothecary that you got over there, and you get your pure daisy. Pretty simple. So you put that in there along with, I should say, four petals and a seed. Uh, it's always important if you're going to do that to get another seed. So if I were to, say, take um, those two, do I have a seed? I don't have a seed on me, but I can get a seed real easy. I don't really need one, but I, not that I can't use another one generating, especially if you plan to use these as a um, decoration block. So you just, oh, oh, let me take this off and I'll get to that little fun little item here in a second. So you just go drop those in there with Q 
and it makes a little sound, and boom, you got your pure daisy. And I'm gonna go ahead and plant you. So that's pretty cool. And you get your living rock that I have right there. And let's go ahead and get the rest of that. Oops, did I grab that? There we go. So I got eight those, and then you can do various constructs with this. Uh, to, but to make your mana pool, I think it was like that. So you get it, you get it like that. And for decoration purposes, you can also form it into a living rock brick, which I think I may be building with. I'm not really sure yet. I haven't decided, um, but I, I'm kind of leaning towards it. Anyway, back to the task at hand. So now that you've gotten your living wood rock, your mana pool, your mana spreaders, and some flowers, uh, you need a way to kind of make it all work. Uh, so you're going to want your wand of the forest. Uh, in order to make this, you need your you need three of the living wood twigs. So that's going to take six of the um, living wood things around the daisy. So you need one little round of eight will be enough. Then you put any two flowers. So you can see you can use white, blue, brown, whatever you want. I went ahead and used two purple because uh, I think that was the flower I had the most of uh, right on either side together. And then you got your wand of the forest. Uh, so what you do, once you have your wand of the forest, you got your mana spreaders, your mana pool, and you got your flowers, and you want, all right, I want to start generating flower uh, mana, and I want to get it into my mana pool. What you do is you go up to it, and you, and you know, any of your spreaders that you have going, and you shift right click, and that's going to highlight it, and you see there it puts around the frame um, that you have on there, and then you're going to, again, shift right click onto the thing you want it to go to, and then you go back to the spreader and then shift right click it again to deselect it. So you, when you hover over it with your wand, it says mana pool. That way you know that that mana spreader is aiming towards your mana pool and filling this up with mana. Now the one thing I should mention is that these day lilies, um, or day blooms I should say, are will not generate mana quickly. It is a very slow process. I've also added in a couple other uh, flowers that you see around here. Um, these endo flames, um, as you will see right here, generating flora. Uh, what these do is they take up, they absorb any combustible items or blocks dropped on the ground nearby. Uh, so I've taken uh, coal, coal blocks, uh, charcoal. Uh, you can drop any, anything that you can essentially put in a furnace to burn as fuel. You can drop it on the ground nearby and it will burn it. Um, so do I have, yeah, so I have a sapling here. So let's go ahead and throw you right there. So give it a second and it will soak it up. Yep. And you see here, it's got the little red, you know, flame coming from it. So you, right there, it is generating some mana. Uh, the other flower that I have going by here is the hydrangeas. Uh, kind of a, I guess a little take on hydrangeas. Uh, what these do is they generate mana from wa water, and they will soak up, uh, use any water in a 3x3 three three radius around it. Uh, so to, the way to get around that is to simply build an infinite pool. And you'll see that you know every couple seconds or so, one of the things goes away. And you can build, you, you can scale this up to um, a rather large pattern if you want. Uh, I've built these uh, six there, and then I got another pool, the first one I built over here with four here. So essentially, it's going to buy it take a three by three pattern. So this block, this block, and these, this nine, section of nine right here. So it would take mana or water from anywhere around it, but you can't have water next to it because it'll just break the flower. So you need a block right now. So, so if you had a, you know, a wood, piece of wood there and piece of wood there, it can take water from there, 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 and of course there. That's why I have them set up like this over here. Um, the counterpart to both the day blooms is called nightshade, and that will generate mana at night. Um, the counterpart to the hydroangias is the thermolily. Uh, this will soak up lava. Um, now the one caveat to uh, end of flames is that you can't throw down a lava bucket. Nothing that will uh, leave a byproduct. So typically when you would put a lava bucket in a furnace, it would leave the bucket behind. You can't use that for that, unfortunately. But you can use coal blocks. And with the amount of coal you should probably be getting in a mod like Monster or Unstable or anything where this mod would be installed, 
um, you're probably going to have a decent amount of coal. So, although if you have a lot of these, y y maybe you won't be using up coal blocks. You might be using charcoal though if you have a tree farm going. So you could definitely do that. Uh, one thing I've seen with the thermal lilies is combining it with the um, blood magic mod and doing a, one of the rituals there that generates lava. And you can do that here. Um, so there's that option too if you want to involve, you know, do two mods at once or something like that. I haven't gotten into blood magic at all, so I can't really say how complicated that is. But um, one of the things you can do to simply kind of set it and forget it, you could do a simple setup of day blooms and nightshades and hydrangeas, and you're covered for day, night, and let water go. Um, one of these things, I don't think they need daylight either. So you could probably, in theory, stack these up with a layer in between them and just kind of have a simple little farm where you could have uh, this going right here or something like that. Put your, your mana spreaders, um, uh, I don't know, stack them in a little tower, I guess, if you want, really wanted to. Uh, kind of have a little section like that. You know, whatever you, you know, kind of think of. Uh, but that's kind of like the basics. So you, you're generating your mana, and I've had, I had this going, um, I set this up around uh, middle of the day yesterday, I think, uh, and I stay, I went AFK, and I just kind of let this stuff generate. I just stood inside my little house over there and just kind of let it generate the whole rest of the day while I was out doing errands and whatnot. And I've done a little bit of mining this morning, and I am still at... Eh, roughly halfway, maybe not even halfway yet. Uh, the inventory of this mana pool is very, very large. Um, so don't be discouraged if all you have this stuff going for days, you log on, play for a couple hours, and then you come back and this thing's barely moving. You will just not see it move. But trust me, it is moving. There is just a very large inventory of mana. So to make the... Um, and it's also part in them because I'm using the slower generating flowers. If you're using a thermal lily uh, thing there, you would also, you know, in a huge setup of those, you'd probably see these little mana spreaders shooting down their uh, their beams pretty regularly. Um, I just haven't gotten that far advanced into it yet. Uh, but to generate, you know, the higher ones, you're going to need um, a little bit more different things than just petals. Um, some of them require the blue mana petals. And how you get those is you simply toss one of the regular petals inside your mana pool and it will spit back the mana petal version of it. Uh, and then you combine those with the regular petals and you get those. Uh, the other ones, say like the Thermal Lily, require runes. And in order to get runes, you can easily just shift click on the rune of choice and it tells you how to make it. And to make these, you need what's called a runic altar. Uh, so you need, in addition to needing these other resources, you need mana steel, which is simply just, you know, iron and getting, throw it into your mana pool and you get that back. So nothing really complicated there. Uh, the runic altar is your living rock around either a mana diamond or a mana pearl. And of course, as you would suspect, that's simply a, a, a diamond or an ender pearl thrown into your mana pool and you get that back. And then once you've crafted that, what you want to do is this thing requires mana. So I've set mine next to my mana pool, and in order to craft the items, I have redirected my mana spreaders to the runic altar. And so if I would do that, for example, I would select that, select that, and then deselect. And now it says it's redirecting towards my runic altar. And to put items around it, you can pretty put pretty much anything on there just to see what it would look like. You just go ahead and throw your item on there, and it starts rotating around it. So once you have all your items on there, you would simply do like you did before with your other items. Throw them around there. Once you get all four, you know, all five of these, you know, flying, rotating around the, your runic altar, you throw a seed on it, and then you'd get your thermal lily or whatever you know flower that you're making. You get that, and you're good to go. And to get something back, it's like if you accidentally throw your bow on there or sword, no problem. Just Shift right click on it with an empty hand and you get it back. Um, so, and these aren't, you know, you're, and you may be asking, well, what's the point of this? It takes forever. What good stuff am I going to get? Well, the first thing I made, and it's an item I highly suggest you going for, um, is this guy, the Ring of Magnetization. And what this does is you, you make it, and you can pretty much guess what it's going to do is you put it on your ring slide on your baubles inventory, 
And for example, if I wanted to go up and say, oh, I don't know. Let me go max distance. Oh, you see that? It just floats right to me. I don't have to do anything on it. So it's kind of like having magnet mode on. Or there's probably another item maybe for from Thalmcraft that does the same thing, maybe. I want to say there is. Um, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, that's pretty awesome. Especially when you're down in a mine shaft and you're using um, a pick or a hammer and you're just going ham bone on making a tunnel and everything. And you don't want to, if you, you're not sure if you drop something or if, say you're over a, a pit and you're mining something down below. Well, it's gonna it's gonna pick you know it's gonna come right back to you. For example, so for example, like that. So it's way down there, and this stuff will follow you. Another cool thing I found is if you are out, uh, you know, gathering flowers or just, you know, say you're low in inventory space and you're just going and you forget what you know how much inventory you have, and you're you're making your mind thing and you're doing your thing. And all of a sudden, you got all this cobble in your ore, and you're like, "Oh man, I need. I, I'm out of inventory space. I need to go back." Don't worry. All you got to do is look down, and you'll see floating on the ground there a huge spinning pile of stuff, and it will follow you. I mean, you can jump, you can run across half the continent, and it will just keep following you. And then when you get back to your base, there it is. So it's kind of like having a huge inventory. Um, the other thing that I found uh, out of how I know it, it it follows you around so much is the other thing I made from Batania, and this will really help uh, stockpile up on your flowers because going around and just hitting flowers and stocking up is kind of a pain. Um, I did not go around and hit manually 44 black flowers and 49 green ones and 62 magenta ones. No. Um, I used another handy little uh, item from this. I think it's under natural apparatus. It is. It is the drum of the wild. Um, and what this does is it triggers a bee to break in nearby foliage. That is awesome. And it's really easy to make. All you need... Oh, no, it's not a drum of the wild. What am I doing? Is it mystical items? Horn of the wild. That's what it is. Simply blowing the horn will quickly cause any nearby vegetation to uproot, leaving behind any drops as if it had been broken by your hand. And it has a really good range on it, too. Um, so it's simple, some simple living wood and a pasture seeds. And all that is is simple grass thrown into your mana pool, and you have that. Let me go grab, and I'll show you what this thing can do, because it's pretty awesome. So if you have a huge field of crops, and you're like, oh, I don't want to mine and everything... This thing's gonna take care of that. No problem. That was it. No, where did I put it? It is. Um, There it is. So let me show you how this thing works, because it's pretty awesome. Let's go over here so I don't break everything else. So you just simply right click. And a little bit of time, you have everything broken. And I have a full inventory. Well, the eggs came towards me as well. You move over here. Yeah, there's a little pile I was talking about. So let me just run around up here, let me go up here, and jump, and jump, and jump, and jump, and and you think they'd be following you? Nope, see, there they are, following you like crazy. <laughs> Uh, so you can have like a huge pile. Now this can be kind of annoying, so if you're down um, mining a lot, and you could have a full inventory of cobblestone, but have a bunch of ore following you. So to do that, you can simply just right click, you know, shift, double click out in your inventory and hopefully get some more ore down there. And then you have your stuff, you know, the cobblestone down below you. Um, but then you just take your ring off, throw that there. And then you got your simple little pile of, you know, whatnot there. Let's get rid of this stuff because I don't need any of this. I I think I will keep the seeds because 
I will keep seeds for flowers and whatnot. There we go. So the first thing is definitely the Ring of Magnetization and then the Horn of the Wild. It is definitely two very handy items I highly suggest you getting. Uh, another item that's actually going to be changed in the one of the updated versions of Batania, um, and I've been trying to make it, but I ran into a little bit of a problem, is another one of the mystical items, um, the, um, not the, no, the baubles. Uh, but back to the Ring of Magnetization. It's pretty easy to make. Uh, you simply need some mana steel ignits and a mana lens. And to make that is simply a gold ignit and an iron ignit and a mana lens. Well, how do you make that? Simple. Some mana steel around a glass pane. So all told, it's four mana steel ignits, which is simply eight iron ignits. Um, and then, well, actually nine, I should say nine because you need one here. So nine iron ignits, one gold ignit, and that's it. Um, for a handy item that's pretty boss. Um, another in that uh, Horn of the Wild I showed you how to make. Another item I've been trying to get is a Pyroclast Pendant. And as you see here, it becomes completely impervious to any fire or lava damage. Now, the way it's being nerfed, I think I read on the change log from the mod maker, was going to be that you're immune to fire, but as long as you're not like on it, I think so like if you get shot with it or run into it or, or something like that or like I forget what it is but you basically can't swim in lava and become, become impervious to lava so that kind of sucks I wish they would just make it more difficult to get um, instead of just completely nerfing it like that but maybe there'll be another thing on it uh, but I made the rune of fire I made a rune I got it in mana diamond but the rune of summer is a little harder uh, requires a rune of air and a rune of earth. I've made the rune of earth before, but the rune of air is something I haven't been able to do. Um, for some reason, when I put all four of these items around my runic altar, it will not combine. So I think I discovered a little bit of a bug there. I haven't looked on the FTB forums to see if uh, if anyone else has come across this yet. So if you guys happen to know uh, or have tried this stuff out and you know have the same problem, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to keep looking and see if I can find stuff. But if it's going to be nerfed, I'm not really hurry to get it uh, necessarily because I, I can just make a, a simple little uh, rune, uh, potion of fire protection and be immune to fire that way too. So I'm not hugely important by that. Uh, another item I'm looking at, toward to getting is the Sojourner's Sash. Uh, what this does is it allows you to move and jump faster. Um, again, this requires a rune of air, so I haven't made that for that reason. Um, but otherwise, there's some really cool items on here. Um, a lot of things that you know, I definitely highly suggest. Uh, I've seen a couple people do some neat things with this. Uh, there's also the Elven Homeland, which is the Elfomancy, uh, which is the portal to Elfheim. Uh, and there's all kinds of stuff you need to do with this, Terra Steel, and some other cool stuff. Now these things, the Mana Pylons, are probably the next thing I'm going to get once I build my, my little structure here. And I'm probably going to do that off camera. I'm probably going to keep with the same type of uh, medieval type design uh, I'm used to building with. Um, but I'm going to, what you can do with these mana pylons is, is instead of having uh, 15 something bookcases around to get 30 levels on your enchanting table, you simply need two of these guys. And that's pretty sweet okay, for just, uh, you know, four iron ignits, four gold ignits, and two diamonds. Pretty awesome heavier cost rather than just some wooden paper but when you're just starting out if you, you know, all of a sudden if you're in an area like I am right here and there's just no co no cows around anywhere and you got to travel for a half hour to get enough cow leather to make your damn bookcases and you have diamonds already kind of cool um, but anyway that's the beginnings of Batania I wanted to show you guys today um, I'm gonna see if there's some other stuff I can show you today if not um, I will see you later, but let me check out some more stuff and I will be right back. Alright guys, I am back and I just checked the time and it does look like we're at about the wrapping up point, but I wanted to get you, um, or give you a little bit of a idea of what we're going to head into next episode so that we can do a little bit more expansion into the nether, uh, hopefully go around and find another fortress and get some blaze rods and some wither skulls and some cool stuff like that. Uh, in order to do that a little bit more efficiency, I want to try and do something a little bit with a mod that I got into at the uh, near the end of my FTB monster season, and that is, take a guess, 
advanced genetics. That's right. I got some skin scales of the bat, and I'm going to try and do some of this stuff so I can see if I can infuse the bat flying with myself. So I can make the getting around, in general, just better. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of a sneak peek towards next episode. Until next time, see you later, guys.